Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, I got a BMW 328i. This is a 2009 model. So this car has a problem. It overheated as the customer was driving. It started to smoke. And what's, what happened was uh, his pipe blew up. I did a little diagnostic, but the pipe blew up. So let me see if I can open this and show you the pipe. Got antifreeze on my hand already. So right here, is the pipe that burst it so this pipe is connected to the expansion tank i believe over here no it's, it's directly connected to the radiator it, uh, the expansion tank is on this side but however i want to tell you one thing guys whenever you drain the antifreeze and refill the antifreeze whenever you take out a pipe or you had an antifreeze leak such as this on this particular car you see that screw right there you do need to bleed this car, okay? A lot of BMW do need bleeding. So if you look at it, some, some of them have the expansion tank right here. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna replace that pipe together and then we're gonna bleed it together, okay? So if your car overheats after you did radiator flush or uh, change the pipe, change the radiator, antifreeze leaked out for any reason. The reason is because you did not bleed it, you, so you do need to bleed it. All right, so let me get my parts together and then we're gonna start this job up, okay? All right, boys and girls, so right here, we have a pipe here. This is the hose, and there's a part number right there. And that's the brand right there. So let's open this up. A few things I wanna show you on this pipe before we install it. All right, so this is what the pipe looks like. It does have this little guy right here. That's the hose that's coming up from right here. So this is gonna go in that direction. And this does go, there is something connected down below. We'll figure that one out. But from here I cannot see, but there has to be something that's connected here. So inside it does have O-rings. So this, this only goes one way, this cannot go wrong. And uh, to put this on, I would put, they do have a little bit of greasing on it. Yeah, it does have it. So, but I do need to rub it because they didn't put it all around. Well, I'll rub around on it, but this side doesn't have any greasing. I'll put something there. Make sure you put some a little bit of lube on it because it's gonna be very hard for you to get in there. But anyways, let's just get this job going. So we're gonna start off from right here. We can move up our camera a little bit. And because I am gonna put my light right here, but I do not want the camera to block it. So right down here, you have torques it's right here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this T, what is this, uh, T20, okay? So we're gonna remove this. Come on, ratchet. it. So once you remove this little screw right here, you're gonna move over, put this somewhere safe. Uh, move over to this side, you're gonna find another one over here. Right, so we're gonna take that one out as well. Once you take this one off, this piece, this air pipe here should become loose. Just like so. Let's take this screw and put it away. Make sure you put it somewhere safe so you know the screws that you're gonna need. Then we're gonna come back to this side. On this side, you're gonna push on these tabs right here or put a flathead screwdriver up around it let me grab something. So if you take a flathead screwdriver, all you're gonna do is you're gonna try to open this and it's gonna come right off. And this pipe should come right off, okay? Once you have that off, you should have more than enough room right here to work at. But if you need more room, remove this, okay? Cause it is gonna block you a little bit. But anyways, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove, uh, I'm gonna remove this retainer right here. You do need to remove the retainer because it doesn't have to come all the way. I'll click right there and same thing for the Let me take my camera so you can see. And I might take off this air duct pipe right here and put it to the side. Let's remove some of this stuff so we have more clearance. Got my light. So what I did here was I popped this retainer here. There is a retainer down here on this right here. I'm not worried about the pipe down below that's connected down there. That's later, we could get to that later. But 
make sure you do not open if you if you're replacing these hoses for any reason like uh this one already emptied out so that's the reason why i'm replacing okay but if you're replacing for any other reason you have to be careful okay because you do not want to open these pipes up if the car is hot do drain your antifreeze beforehand okay ah come on retainer goes right back in so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just take this off completely because we do have new ones on the new pipe the reason why i'm taking these off is because they're gonna keep popping back in okay after that they're gonna be tough to take off on the other end i want you to be careful with the radiator okay because you do not want to damage the radiator all right so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna pop this open it's already out almost all the way all right looking good so far and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna have to push this hose out of the way once that hose is out of the way i should be able to take this guy out see that it was all corroded and there was done deal with this little guy so let's put this to the side here that can sit there all right and this side be careful like i said you do not want to yank too much here because the radiator so take your time so you're not going to see me record this side because i do not want to damage anything but i am going to slightly try to take it off somehow some way okay so go slow and easy that's the only thing i could tell you all right to make the job a little bit easier what i did was i removed the air filter housing right here the whole thing okay it has two bolts number 10 here i was going to take these out but then there's more bolts you're not going to be able to open these bolts all around so very simple um you're going to disconnect the math airflow sensor that's the connector right here disconnect that loosen up this with your flathead screwdriver and it comes right out okay this number 10 bolt you're going to see right here and here those are the two bolts are connected right there and right there and then comes right off okay it gives you a whole bunch of axes and i did take this apart all right so what i did was i wiggled it around wiggled it wiggled it wiggled it. i was on it for 20 minutes okay and then i use my flathead here just slightly just slightly just slightly i use two flat heads at the same time one on this side so it comes out equally all right so very simple you see that it comes right out this one i'm gonna cut off and i'll put a small little clamp there but anyway there's our pipe it's out and i'm gonna remove this one in the same way and once it's out we're gonna install the new one okay so that's about it i'm sorry i couldn't show you because my hands are dirty with the antifreeze everything is just slippery okay but let's continue and then i'm gonna show you more further oh man it was so easy to take this guy off all I did was took out the retainer and then I used my uh, flat head and I put it right between there, the neck, pam, and it came right out. Okay, but uh, now we gotta go a little bit more further. Let me set up my camera right here and I wanna bring it down. All right, and I also took off this pipe right here. All I did was, uh, let me show you uh, the metal piece. I broke the metal piece off, so I'm gonna put a little clamp on that. But inside the pipe that was in there, it was all corroded. Look at that. It was done deal, all right? So it's a perfect time to change it. So what we're gonna do is, I did grab a little bit of grease right here. This is a, this is a, it's a, it's a grease that dissolves. Um, and you don't wanna put too much either. So like I said, it does have a little bit of grease, but on this side, it does not have it. So what I like to do is I like to put a little bit of grease myself. And I do like to put a little bit around, make sure this neck is clean. And put a little bit around the neck. And that's going to give it, put it on all of them, okay? Put it on this, put it on this right here. Uh, you're going to do the same thing here, a little bit here. So the retainer from here, it's got to go back on, okay? And uh, let's put a little bit of grease here. So a little bit of greasing is going to help us uh, smooth, everything goes in smooth, okay? So... The little retainer that I took off this guy, I have to put it back on because every time these go on, all you're going to hear is a click, okay? That's going to be the sign that 
it clicks on, okay? So pretty much make sure you have your retainer all the way, okay? And then what we're gonna do is try to take it in a perfect angle. Take this little guy, it only goes in one way because it doesn't have a little notch right there in the center. So you cannot put it the wrong way. There you go, it clicks right in. And now I'm gonna try to get this side in. These cars are not hard to work on, they just look complicated, okay? But to put this pipe on, make sure you get every single angle is perfect, okay? And if you can, somehow, some way, give it a support in the back when you push it because you do not want to push and break anything, okay? But this is pretty much smooth. And what I'm gonna do is, bam! Everything's back in except this little pipe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get a clamp and I'm gonna put this on. Tighten it up a little bit, bada bing, bada boom. Just make sure nothing leaks, put everything back together. Once I have everything back together, we're gonna put the antifreeze, I'm gonna let the car run. Put the heat on, you should be getting heat also, okay? And then open that wall, okay? So let me gather everything, let me put everything back together, and let me go get a small little clamp, and we're gonna put that in, and put everything back together, okay? Once everything's complete, you're not gonna see me do it. But very simple, put the air duct pipe, make sure you put the connector for the airflow sensor, two number 10 bolts, and tighten this up. And make sure this is in. And make sure you bleed or the car will overheat. All right, so job well done. Got this in, got the screw in, got the screw in here. Got the connector right there. A pipe with the clamp right there. Got my screws uh, for the air housing here tight. Got the connector in for the sensor. Got that bolt tight. The two number 10 I was talking about right there. All done, we put the piping together. Next up is, let me go grab a um, flathead. So, we're gonna put antifreeze in. There you go, if you need all the information, right there, okay? And there's a little number right there, that's the number you're gonna look for to buy this piece, the antifreeze. So, what we're gonna do is to put this in, I'm gonna open this, okay? That's the bleeder valve. And then we're gonna, if your, car, if your BMW overheats and you had just recently got a flush or if you leaked out, it could be simple as that you need to bleed it. So this is already mixed. We do not need to mix this little guy. Let me remove the sticker off here. So let's pop this open. Okay, there you go. So you do wanna put the original antifreeze in there. This is what this is called for. I know I'm gonna make a little bit of mess because I'm holding the camera. Oh, that's too much of a mess. So let me set up my camera. I don't want that kind of mess, okay? All right, so there it is. Let me grab my other light so we can have better lighting on this side. There you go. All right, so again, make sure your bleeder valve is open and then we're gonna fill this up. I can hear it hissing from right here, okay? It's hissing. So pretty much all the air is traveling out of there. It's making a noise, hissing sound. That's the sound you want to listen to. All right, I don't want to get too much either. Once this comes up, you're good. But this is full. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let the car run. And uh, once it heats up really good, I am gonna open this valve one more time. That's how you're gonna bleed it, okay? And just make sure, I did put a rag down here just in case I spilled some, so I did spill some, so the rag catches it. Wipe it down, I'm gonna leave this rag here because there's nothing turning there. 
There's no belt that's gonna grab it because the belts are on this side. So, but do be careful. Let's lock this up, okay? Don't go crazy either, yanking this either, okay? With those, you don't you don't want to go crazy with anything, okay? Just lock it down and let it go, okay? And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the heat on this car and let it run for a good 10-15 minutes. I'm gonna keep an eye on it. Then I'm gonna come back and I am gonna open this and just bleed out some of the air out of there, okay? So let me give me some time and we'll get right back. All right, guys. As the car runs, make sure you have your heat on. I got good heat here. Make sure you pay attention. There's no leaks in any of the pipes, so I don't see anything. No leaking. All right. And what we're gonna do is, don't worry about it. The car is running. All you're gonna do is, you're gonna take your flathead screwdriver and you're gonna open this. You see that? Bada bang, bada boom. Steady flow is a good sign, okay? No air, okay? Thank you for watching, guys. I hope this video helped you. And uh, if I was you, I would do this bleeding twice, okay? Give it some time. Pay attention, the car does not overheat, bleed again, and you should be in good hands, okay? So again, thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe, share, and like.